Okay, welcome to another uh, tutorial on uh, Lightroom and uh, HDR processing. Today we're going to be taking a look at a series of photos that was taken in Big Bend National State Park. And today we're going to take a look at this Mesa photo here. And what I want to do at the end of it is to be able to have kind of a dramatic black and white photo. Uh, so this has just been selected. So what we're going to do is go ahead and prepare this image uh, so we can actually do that. So what I want to go and do is brighten it up just a little bit here. And, uh, go ahead and really bring down the highlights, up shadows, and bring the blacks down. It's back in, and I'm definitely going to add some contrast here. So this curve here on the tone curve, up the saturation of blues just slightly. We're going to go back and we're going to make some multiple adjustments. Bring my sharpening. Masking to about uh, 50%. Now, in Lightroom, the masking uh, feature, if you hold down the Alt key, I'm sorry, yeah, the Alt key, and if you move the Alt key, you can see essentially what the mask is affecting. So again, as we're sharpening, move it up and down, you'll see um, with the greater the masking, the less and less the impact. And so again, I want to kind of keep that about halfway. Uh, and again, we shot this at uh, ISO 200, so I'm going to go ahead and bring the luminosity our luminance uh, reduction down just slightly. Okay, I'm going to turn on uh, back apparition, especially around the edging. And we do have some area here. Let me see if that's going to make a difference. And it actually didn't do too, too bad. So let's bring it back out and go ahead and turn on a uh, enable correction. Now, depending on the type of lens, like I used a Canon EF24 to 70 millimeter 2.8. Uh, especially anything that's a wider angle, when you use the uh, uh, profile correction, what you're going to do is you're going to see some reduction in the barreling that takes place. If I can move this back and forth, you can see what I'm referring to. Uh, so we're going to use the default settings, so again, it's before and that's after. All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave the transform again, um, good with the lines. Again, you use transform to kind of straighten up your image. And for uh, anything of like vignetting or dehazing, I'm going to go ahead and wait and see if I'll need. Here. Okay. okay. Go ahead and just kind of work with the contrast here. Let me just actually use the contrast and then we'll come back. Um, as far as the white balance, uh, we shot this uh, native at about 4800 Kelvin. Uh, let me go and see what auto gets me. I've got that way, way too long. Let's actually try some daylight. Okay, I'm actually more, a little more happy with daylight. Uh, so we'll go ahead and try that. Now, to move this into, like, say, a, a third party application like Roar, what you will need to do is you'll right click and you're going to click export. And uh, to send it to a Roar, you see HD Pro here. It'll send it as a TEF image, but with the Lightroom. Adjustment. So we'll go ahead and click that. And we're going to give that a moment. Okay. And you'll see that we're asked now if we want to go ahead and uh, do some chromatic aberration reduction. In this case, we want to go ahead and click no uh, and go ahead and click create HDR. And again, you can use uh, software like Aurora to create uh, HDR images. And actually, you can use a single. Uh, raw file in order to do that. So here we are in Aurora HDR. Now the new Aurora HDR 2017 actually is about to be released this week. Uh, so there's going to be a lot more features there and I'll be working that uh, piece of software here in about a week or so, but I will make a, I'll let everyone know <clears throat> when I'll be using either two. Okay. So this image already looks a little bit different. The reason for that is, is that as it comes into Aurora, it's going to have, a, you know, like I said, a little bit of an HDR look to it already added. You hold down the eyeball, you'll see it kind of looks like as it left Lightroom. Okay. Uh, again, same principle as with uh, Photoshop. What I want to do is I'm going to leave the original layer or original image uh, intact. Uh, and Aurora does use layers, so we can go ahead and add a new layer here. You don't have to name it. You can want to. I just usually don't. Um, and then again, I have some presets here that I can go ahead and apply and kind of see if that's kind of where I want to go. But I want to go ahead and just kind of work through this uh, on my own based on just, again, you know, some experience I've had with it. So what I normally do is I'll go ahead and bring in and I'll just kind of really just kind of work with the midtones and see just kind of how I like the image. Now, in kind of some bright rocks, what I want to do is I'm just going to go about 30 on that. Um, whites, uh, I want to go ahead and leave where I'm at, but I'm going to go ahead and pull the highlights down. Okay. And then what I can do is bring the whites up just a little bit, see if it's needed. Uh, blacks, or the blacks, and I'm just going to add a bit of contrast here, okay? Now clarity, 
It's going to add that detail into the rock. So I have about 50. What I'm actually going to do is take about 33, and then I'm also going to take the HDR look itself down a little bit, bring some softness and just a hair bit of boost. And the HDR detail slider, typically I'll leave this on zero. It really depends on the application. Now, the reason for that is I don't really like to have my images kind of that HDR grungy look, but if that is the look you're going for, this slider is really going to really help get you there. So essentially I can turn this all the way up and you're going to see this, you know, real gritty uh, kind of uh, organic-y look to it. So uh, like I said, sometimes I have some images, especially if I'm working on like cars and stuff like that, and I really want to get that, you know, the reflection and things like that. HDR uh, in a selective way really kind of helps get me there. Okay. Uh, HDR denoise. So again, I shot this at about 200 ISO, so there shouldn't be too, too much noise. So what I can do is I can go to 100 and just kind of look and see where the shadows. The shadows are really going to point out where you have noise, also some flat areas. Uh, so you'll see the little graininess there that is um, noise from the sensor. So I'm going to take that back to 25%. And so what I'll do is I'll take this down to about 80, and then I'll go ahead and bring in, let's say, 25 plus and then go ahead and also bring in about 10 to 15 on the smoothing uh, and that's really going to take care of that. Go back and show you. Scroll back to the top, give it a second. Yep, and there you go. Okay, take this back to five and we will continue on. All right, so image radiance. Image radiance, what this does is this actually allows you to do a uh, kind of a softening effect, uh, you know, almost kind of like a specialized effect. And, uh, but I don't want to go too heavy on it. So, because if you go too much, you know, you just kind of get this weird kind of funky image, which, you know, for me, I, I don't like it at all. So I only go this maybe 10 max and go ahead and smooth that out. And I'm actually going to use it to kind of brighten the image some. And I'm going to go ahead and do some smart colorize. What smart does is it looks at the areas, like I said, the greens and blues and the reds, and it just kind of adds a little bit of uh, boost to the color itself. Now, again, you can kind of see what before and after. And right now that's working for me. So now on color here, I'm going to leave the saturation to zero, but I am going to go ahead and add some vibrance. Okay, I'm going to add about 20 there. Okay. All right, so here's where we're going. So again, ultimately, I'm going to want this in black and white, and you can actually kind of pull your saturation down and kind of see where you're going with that. Uh, but uh, so I'm going to pull it back to zero. So, but what I want to do on my detail is on my global, I'm going to add about anywhere between 10 and 15 on my medium I may add that a little bit of small detail then I go to my highlights go to my shadows and then I'm going to pull masking way way down so again this just like we saw previously uh, the masking helps to um, you know kind of delay or to retard some of what is uh, being applied and you can kind of click the before and after you kind of see the detail here more so in the rock okay Glow. Uh, in this case, we would not utilize glow, but especially if you have sunsets and things like that, sky scenes, and you want to add some warmth or coolness to it, uh, glow is a really, really good tool for that. Okay. So what I want to do is go ahead and end my top and bottom lighting. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of start to uh, darken the top, but I want to go ahead and bring the middle out a little bit. More, okay. Then I'm also going to shift this slightly. So again, I really want to illuminate the rock, but I'm not as interested in illuminating the sky. I want to kind of bring that down. Okay. When we get to the tone curve here. We're going to go ahead and make the uh, typical, I guess, contrast S curve. Bring that there. All right. So now we're going to look at the luminosity factor. So I'm really looking more for sky here. So that catch up. And so luminosity. So what I can do is I can really lower these. Uh, blues, but really the cyan. So you'll see I have blue here and I have cyan really going to white out here. So this one this is going to be a little bit more challenging. So what I might do is I might pull my blues up and then really kind of go dark on my cyans. And then I'm going to take my saturation and I'm just going to boost those. And kind of take a look and see where I want to go. Okay. About right there. I really want to make that rock kind of stand out. So up my red and my yellows. Go ahead and darken, darken the reds, and boost these. And again, kind of get that to, to display it as, as well as possible. Lower my greens and turn this up here. Okay. Now I'm not going to change any as far as color toning, things like this. I may not make an alternate color. Uh, and actually, I'm just going to add just a little bit, but I'm really looking for this inner light. 
Okay, and so again, that's going to add that to bring that light back to the shadows here, especially as this was shot. The sun was more to the west of the rock, and so this is going to be kind of fallen shadows so there. And then opacity is the overall opacity of the effect. Now, sometimes what I like to do is I'll you know, make maybe a, an effect that's even a little bit more too powerful for what I'm wanting, but then I'll go ahead and lower the opacity to say around 60 to 70, even up to 80% and work with it. Now, again, since I've done this one to uh, my liking here, I'm going to leave it as 100%. Now, I can go ahead and add another layer and kind of start working with that. But well, actually what I like to do is a little bit more advanced, which is to right click on the layer we just created and click Create Luminosity Mask. Okay, And what this is going to do is it's going to look at each pixel and based on its brightness value. And again, what it does is it looks at the brightest part of the image and the darkest part of the image. And based on its value, essentially zones various pixels and it creates a white and black and gray in between mask. So white reveals, black conceals. Uh, and so that's what you see this change just now. And you really can't see this here, but the rock obviously is darker. So <clears throat> what the changes we've just made have not really been applied to the rock, but they've been applied to all the white rock here and the clouds and some of the sky. What I can do is I can actually right click and then click invert mask and essentially now only the rock is impacted and the sky is pretty much left alone. So actually what we're going to do is go ahead and take that back and uh, invert. And what we can do is also try some of the different uh, layer styles. So if I click uh, soft light, turn it on and off and see it takes us normal. A little bit happier with normal. Uh, but we can try some various different uh, settings here. Multiply, makes, like I said, makes it darker. Uh, luminosity uh, affects really just the luminosity. It's not impacting any colors and things like that. Okay. So actually for this image, believe it or not, I'll actually like the multiply. So again, remember focusing on the rock because the rock is going to be the key and the centerpiece for what we're trying to do here. So. Uh, what I can do is I can take the uh, overall opacity and I can kind of lower that to kind of blend it a little bit better from what I'm looking for. And then I can always go back and I would say, you know what, I really want to make that rock kind of stand out. And I want to bring the highlights back into it. Okay. And so before and after, you're really just seeing that detail there. Lights. Right. So at this point, what we're going to go and do is go and create another layer. All right. So we're going to now affect the areas that uh, we didn't see before. Uh, now, again, like you said, you have some presets here that you could utilize. Uh, sometimes I like to start with like a realistic uh, HDR. And so you have these settings like um, balanced HDR. And what you can do actually do is make sure you're again on your secondary layer you just created. Click it and just kind of see really what effect it's adding to it. Now, I'm not too worried about the color. So again, from a, just a you know color perspective, I may not you know use this because obviously it's kind of in your face red. But the reality is we're going to be actually masking all the color when we convert it to black and white. So I'm actually looking to see what's really going to make the rock pop. So here's a realistic uh, but bright. Okay, while I like how it's really lit the rock up, I can start to see the banding that's taking place there. So it's really not going to work for our needs here. Uh, and here's one that says Vivid Memories. Uh, that's okay, but I'm really not that happy with it. So I'm gonna kind of come back here and I take a look at this one. So I like this one uh, quite a bit better here. So I'm gonna turn that up, add this piece here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring my whites back down. Okay. Uh, contrast in. Much, and I think what it is, because my smart tone turn up so high. Bring that here. So we're going to need contrast. All right. So do it like that. I'm going to bring my HDR look down. I'm going to bring my structure back up slightly. Um, put in some softness, boost, pull that down. Again, additional noise to it. So I'm going to add a little bit of a noise reduction, but I'm also going to bring in some smoothness here. Okay. The gradients and turn off of that. See what that catches me. Okay. Not too, too bad. Over. Actually, that's uh, helping me soften that uh, edge right up there just a little bit. Uh, go ahead and bring colors down. 
Um, there. Contrast here. Okay, I'm really liking how that's bringing the rocks out. Uh, global, I got my smalls coming up just a little bit too much. This, bring the shadows up, pull that down. Okay. My top lighting bottom. All right, we're going to go ahead and leave uh, the tone curve alone. We're not going to modify that. Set that just in case. Um, for my luminosity values, you see again, I really like how it's really darkening that uh, the rock there. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Go ahead and bring yellows. All right, that's a little bit too much. So we may want to try to back that down just a bit. And we'll up. And again, as you're seeing, it's just really just kind of going through it and just understanding what each of the controls and what the sliders are doing, with how they're impacting. And again, that's why you, know, you can spend really a lot of time and just kind of enjoy it and just kind of playing around and seeing, just you're really making the image come alive, making it kind of look like, again, what you saw in your mind's eye uh, when you took the photo. All right, a little bit too much vignetting, but again, we're going to bring that inner light piece back in. Okay. All right, boy, and you can see too, before and after. So again, just a really, really vivid image. And I'm going to go ahead and create a third layer because I want to take a look at something. Uh, in this uh, dramatic, uh, you do have a black and white, though again, I'm not real interested in kind of the effect. Uh, you have something that's called ethereal. Yeah, that's kind of like interesting. Uh, but then you do have this black and white. So not interested in that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that layer. Good with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply. And then what that's going to do is going to take the layers, it's going to process, collapse them down. Uh, it's going to automatically import it back into uh, Lightroom, which is what we want it to do. And then from Lightroom, uh, we're going to do, use another plugin, and then that's where we're going to convert it to a black and white image. Give that a moment. So again, this was shot on a 5D um, Mark II, I believe. And um, so again, we have quite a big image size. Nope, I'm sorry, this was actually shot on a 60D. So the 60D, uh, so 5,000 by 3,000 pixels. Okay. I'll give that a moment. You're going to see that pull back through. And uh, you can see a, just a real, real big difference. Uh, and even more dramatic is if you were to right click uh, and then do a reset, uh, that's really what we started with. And that's just kind of where we're at right there with that one. I like the color on that one. So what I might actually do is go ahead and click export and take it all the way to export here. And that's actually exports it out as an image. So what I might do is say edited color. Okay. And essentially is the full name. This is image uh, 5021 Aurora HDR HDR. Okay. We're going to save it as a uh, JPEG, uh, sRGB, no other setting changes. Go ahead and click export. It's going to ask me for the directory. So I'm going to select the directory, uh, photography, Big Ben, raw, use, get these, click open, and it's going to go ahead and process that photo. Okay. So once that's saved, now I kind of uh, I have a, a original uh, image. I have the colorized version I like. Now let's go ahead and create this to a black and white. So I'm going to right click again. I'm going to go export. Um, and this time, actually, um, I'm not going to go ahead and use these. What I want to do actually is go to edit in, and I'm going to use uh, a, a set of tools that Google has uh, that is essentially free now. This used to be about 100 bucks for these tools, and actually Google uh, started giving those away for free. So uh, what I'll do is I'll put the link uh, to the download in the description field, uh, and feel free to download those. Uh, and actually, I would download them as soon as you can, because I don't know how long Google's going to go ahead and run with that. So uh, the effect we're looking for is the uh, Silver FX Pro 2, which is the black and white tool. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and edit a copy. Okay, we want to still try to retain that original in case we want to come back, we want to make some adjustments and things like that. So we're just editing copy. So just like it did with uh, Aurora, it's exporting a TIFF image and it is opening up the Silver FX Pro and you can see it pop up right there. Okay. Now, this is the default setting. Now, just like with the other tools that we have kind of some, uh, I guess, uh, favorites and things like that that you can use to kind of baseline. Now, in this tool, I kind of like just kind of starting out on my own. So you have a brightness, your highlights, midtones, and shadows. You have dynamic, which is more from an auto perspective. You have contrast sliders, amplify whites, amplify blacks. And structure for highlights, midtones, and shadows. Uh, Tonality protection. So again, this helps to protect shadows to help keep them being too dark. Again, remember the darkest and lightest. 
So it keeps that from happening. Then you have some color filters and things like that. So let's go ahead and just start kind of working with our brightness filters. Um, Sometimes I'd like to just go ahead and start with the dynamic brightness and see where that takes me. Sometimes you can kind of play with those. Um, so let's go ahead and say, bring the highlights out. Take the shadows down. Take the tones up. Um, then we're going to go ahead and bring, just kind of boost these whites. And, you know, if you're not really sure what they'll do is, you know, go ahead and take it up to 100%, kind of see where it's at, and then go ahead and do 50%, kind of take it halfway. Uh, same thing with blacks, you know. So I'm getting this really kind of gritty sky, I'm not quite where I want it to be. And I'm actually going to, to bring that down a little bit more later on. So let's see for that. I'm not really looking for that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that at... Uh, Minus one, blacks down, whites up. That structure, now again, if you're really wanting to focus on a structure, um, you know, especially in a case like this, where it's just a really, really gritty image, and that's the look you're going for, then do the modifications here to your structure. Uh, in this case, I'm not quite looking for that, so I'm really going to leave these where they're at. All righty. And now, so the colorize filter is what it does, it takes the image and it's like, say, I click on the reds, and what it does is it takes the reds and everything that's around that, and it then essentially places a filter on the strength of uh, utilizing color. So, again, based on various colors of the scene, uh, and you'll see there, it just really, really darkens up the uh, background there. Okay, so what we're going to do is, and we're not really going to affect this, we're going to go ahead and turn that off. So up and down. But what I'm going to do is on their film type. So I'm going to make sure I don't really have any grain, but the sensitivity, and this is, this mimics the sensitivity of various film and film styles. So what I can do is, remember all that red that was in the rock, we can kind of either brighten it or darken it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and brighten it. Yellow is going to be very, very similar to that, too, and I can kind of uh, maybe flip-flop either one of those. Let's say turn the white, uh, yellows all the way up and the reds all the way down, just to kind of see what, what I'm happy with on those, okay? There was a little bit of green greenery in the uh, in the scene, not that much, but then really on cyan and blue, really where we start to see uh, really a big impact to the image, okay? So we can kind of just play around with both of them to see kind of where we're at. Now, actually, I like that. This one. Okay. This kind of makes it kind of a stark, stark contrast there. Same thing with purples. Okay. And what we can do is we can go ahead and add uh, levels and curve adjustment. Now, again, from a toning perspective, I'm not interested in doing that. I'm not interested in adding things like that. So... This one, I'm not quite where I want it to be. So what I can do is I can start to go ahead and play with the uh, the details here. Uh, let's just take this to, let's say, 100% and just kind of start walking through the hue and see where I want it to be. Okay. Don't go cr too crazy with it because, as you'll notice, there was some banding issues that I had uh, previously. So I'm actually looking for something like that. Yes. Okay. So now what I do is once I've kind of messed with my colors and got the look I'm looking for, what I'll do is I'll go back up now, and then now I'll go ahead and still kind of mess or uh, kind of update and work with my brightness sliders. Uh, see again if, I, if I'm happy with where they're at. So like I said, you can take it all the way up, take it back down, and to kind of see if again that's that's where what direction I'm going to take it. white so much blacks pull that back up here right. there we go I again structure am I really looking to make any modifications to structure I can but I'm not uh, for this image it doesn't really work Let's see if I'm going to use protection on my tonalities here okay just a little bit more for shadows and then highlights here okay so I'm actually liking how this is turning out. So what I want to do is go ahead and click Save. And that's going to process. <clears throat> and there's our black and white image. Now, 
Uh, with this, what I'll do is then I'll go ahead and make some final exposure and contrast adjustments. What I might do is go ahead and start bringing in some of this contrast and make kind of kind of a more look to it. So maybe that down a little bit. Take my highlights, boost those, pull my shadows. And like I said, just kind of do an opposite or reverse. It's really adding contrast to the image. Okay. Got about five there. Add an S curve. Or better yet, what I'll do is I'll do a kind of a uh, faded look to it. I'll pull it up here. Hit. Um, that's with a color. I'm okay with sharpening. Went up that just a little bit. So no uh, I can go ahead and apply additional lens correction, um, but it really doesn't need it. So, because again, remember we've already corrected for that transform. We're not having to change that. Uh, and then now, what I said, I might go ahead and bring in just a little bit of vignetting. But again, once we've added a faded effect, the vignetting kind of really doesn't help too much there. So, I can I can pull the D kind of the opposite direction and really kind of push that uh, the vignetting, or I'm sorry, the uh, faded look up quite a bit. Okay. So I think that's where we're at with that. Um, yes. So what I want to go ahead and do is at this point, I want to go ahead and bring in some split toning here. Okay. So split toning is, let's just take each one of these sliders to about 20. And then what you can do is essentially you can add various effects to it. So essentially for highlights, I'm going to have more of a uh, yellow and shadows more for blue. Uh, you can find kind of a fine tune the balance in between the two. All right. Uh, that can, like I said, just if you want the whole thing blue and then pull that back quite a bit. Okay. And kind of turn that on and off. So for now, actually, I'm going to leave it like this. All right. And save that. You can do Command Shift E on a Mac or Control Shift E on a PC. And again, that brings us back to the dialog. And then edited color, I'm going to just do edited D and your BW for black and white. And click export. And go and select the directory, and it will export the image. So I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, later on, we'll talk about some other techniques to kind of maybe convert some of the uh, photos that you're wanting uh, into black and white. There's other softwares uh, that are available. And again, you know, creativity go very, very many directions with this and just really kind of get that look that, again, you're looking for. So hope you enjoyed. We'll talk soon.